Nurses and considering the question, uh, can you have an update on the dome approach you have? I didn't quite catch the entire question on the active glasses. Uh, and not silver screen, you would have to switch most likely to, uh, to active glasses. If we were not using a silver screen, correct. absolutely. Correct. And then that brings me to the second question uh, the dome approach, correct. which are not silver screen. The, the the, the glasses issue right now is active glasses uh, hold back too much light for the larger screen. So at this point in time, in terms of technology, until lamps get a lot brighter and we resolve what they call eight times limited systems, we have to go with a polarized solution. Uh, the glasses you all have are a new design. They are using a brand new state-of-the-art polarizing material that allows more transmissivity through them. And they have a higher signal-to-noise ratio, which uh, coupled with some other developments we're working on, will work towards reducing ghosting to minimal levels. Yes, as Larry said, they are a lot cheaper. Now the dome, I touched on that a couple of days ago. I find that a dome solution is going to be the most challenging for us because of contrast. A lot of us in this audience know the film is 4,000 to 1. We're getting about 2,700 to 1 here. IMAX, I think, at the moment is the best picture on a dome because we have that gray screen because we have 4,000 to 1 film and uh, we do a pretty good job. Uh, to get a digital projector uh, up, you know, closer to 4001 is what we have to figure out, and I don't believe we have a solution to that yet. So I think we'll be in, film will be in domes um, uh, a long time. And I think film will be in regular theaters a long time, especially if you, uh, you keep your film library and put a projector in. Not completely necessary, but not a bad idea. I was just gonna come up there also. Uh, Today, really, the only way to illuminate a dome adequately is to use multiple projectors. Uh, edge blending is getting better, it's becoming automated, uh, it's working much better. However, in a dome uh, or in any venue using edge blending, unless you're incorporating uh, optical blending, which we actually hold quite a few patents, um, you do have artifacts still there. And it's something that we don't believe at this time is the appropriate solution. It might be a shortstop solution, but not a long-term solution. How, how would you characterize uh, the status right now of your R&D? Are you kind of at a pausing point installing, or what, what direction? How would you characterize where you are right now? In R&D, I'm going straight home to work again. We are we are uh, continuing. I mean, the fact that we just launched the product, this is really what I call the first phase, and I alluded to this image on Hanser that's got tons of power that we're not utilizing. Uh, one of the things that we believe very strongly in terms of the future is uh, image manipulation. Uh, DMR, 2D to 3D conversion have proven to be very successful. Uh, Larry alluded to some of the other areas that we are working on uh, surrounding ghost busting, motion artifact reduction, there's uh, DMR light, uh, there's other ones I can't tell you about. Um, but the point being is that we have designed the system to last for a long time. Uh, a lot of the other systems out there are just a projector, just a server, and projectors are going to improve, and that's why we're projector agnostic. If there's a value in changing the projector down the road, we'll do so. The image enhancer is set and designed to accommodate other systems. And just to add a little bit to that, you know, uh, oversampling is so important. Pretty well everything you saw here today was filmed, was scanned at 8K. So therefore, if, if we do get a 6 or an 8K projector, you don't have to go back and do that. And you've got to remember also, you know, there's been a few 4K DIs in uh, presentation, but it, it's amazing to note that IMAX is the most experienced in the world in 4K because all our DMR, brilliantly done by the guys in Toronto, have all been, been 4K. So we, we know what 4K is about probably better than anybody. And uh, our DCPs are going to be able to go in a 4K projector with nothing when we get there if we think there's a business need. Yeah, I've got uh, two questions, what, what, and I may have missed this, but what is the recommended maximum screen size for these these uh, projectors? Like, what's the, the, the maximum you're recommending, and what is that relative to the screen that we're seeing? And do I understand correctly 
that sort of the next level is a few years away and then the next step, or did I misunderstand? Just give you an idea. I'll answer the question in the role in the hallway here because it's a, it's a, it's a source of, of great debate, to be honest with you. What we've tested and feel comfortable with is screen widths up to 70 feet in width. Okay? What height would that be then? Uh, at a 1.9 aspect ratio, which is I think about 30 and whatever. Yeah, whatever. 7 and Okay. This particular screen is actually 58 feet wide and is actually a 2.08 aspect ratio. Um, almost, I, I think we've completed the designs on about the next uh, 25 AMC locations, and by miles, the, the majority of them are 1.9 aspect ratio, just the, the way the theater geometry works in this particular auditorium. Okay. Um, yeah. Jim, you're talking about once I, if, I, if I'm going the wrong direction here. Um, with, is this uh, overlay system that you have, does it, uh, does it, smooth things enough to allow you to create some type of a, uh, a vertical anamorphic process to cover the uh, one, one I'm going to be cautious answering that. We, we are not doing anything anamorphic with it, but it does have some magic to it. We, we are not doing anything anamorphic in nature with it. However, it does have some magic to what it does, which is the um, process. So actually, we'll talk about that. Actually, uh, I didn't ask if you were doing anything anamorphic with it. I was wondering if you could apply an anamorphic process to it to create the one and four out of that same 4K. Yes, you could. To the presentation, is it means that the, in future IMAX show will, uh, as a cinemascope show, but not a screen. Sorry, could you just... Is it means that in future, right. IMAX show, the people will show as a cinemascope, the old the format cinemascope show, but not giant screen with a spectre range as a 4D. I mean, the, the reality is that the majority of the, of the films that are exhibited in, from, the, from the Hollywood studios are their tentpole films, and the majority of those are actually at a 2.40 aspect ratio. So consequently, the 1.9 aspect ratio actually plays fairly well on those types of films in particular. What we're looking at trying to do over time is actually be able to go wider than the 70 feet, obviously, to create more the effect that you're talking about. Larry, sorry, you, you didn't quite answer the, the second part of the question, but do I understand correctly that sort of the next leap in size is a few years away as opposed to a year away? Or no, the next, the next leap in size, if you ask me, is about a year away. If you ask Brian, it's probably closer to about a year and a half away. It really depends, you know, it's, it's a matter of getting the light and the resolution on screen. And, you know, there's a lot of players that are working on those, on those uh, two aspects in conjunction with us. And so hopefully, you know, what I want to be able to do is come back to the marketplace and say, you know, here we go, we can go up to 80 feet now. The reality is, you know, when you go bigger, it affects the image on screen, and I gotta make sure this guy signs off, because he's the guy that's sitting with the filmmaker and saying, I'm warranting to you that you're gonna be happy going into the auditorium and see the presentation on the screen. Okay, thanks. Okay, there's a question here. David. Okay. You uh, from a technical point of view, I'm wondering why you're doing the image enhancement in real time in the cinema. As supposed to do it in post-production, um, it would seem a lot less complicated and also enable you to upgrade it with new developments. Uh, well, we're not, we're not saying that we're not doing any enhancement in the engine. Bottom line, we're, our, our DMR file has is, is, is been invented basically for film. And of course, we're taking generally 2K information uh, from the from the filmmaker and in, in that and uh, in, in Dark Knight we actually scanned it 4K. So we're doing a lot of good stuff in DMR to enhance the image, and then Brian can take over and do some things to enhance the digital engine. That at the moment it's only a 2K, so it's kind of a two-step process. I'll, I'll give you one example of what we do. Most digital projectors do sense the light coming out of the projector from within. So what you're not taking into account is the light bouncing off the screen if you're watching 3D going through your glasses. Our system monitors what's going on on that screen as if it was in your seat. So it's monitoring from your eyes. So if you watch a 3D presentation anywhere using dual projectors, in many cases you'll run into problems where one eye is brighter than the other. And that's very bothersome in 3D. That won't happen.